I'm back with another video for you today and I've got Dahlia here in the studio. It's nice to be back. We have a long gestating video that we've been planning for the house of Comme des Garçons. Today we're going to talk about 20 of our favorite Comme des Garçons fragrances coming right up. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian. This is Dahlia. So today, yes, we're talking about Comme des Garçons, a very avant-garde house with very, very unique fragrances. And uh, I've been falling in love more and more with a lot of their releases as of late. I thought I'd have a guest here with me today, like Dahlia, to discuss 20 of our favorite fragrances from this house. Uh, they are currently being sold at San Francisco's ZGO Perfumery. So if you're in the market to buy fragrances from Comme des Garçons, you would know, go there to buy them here locally in San Francisco. And I have a link to the store in the info box. Prior to that, I used to go right almost like a block or two away and sample all their fragrances at uh, Barney's, which we used to go together It's as no well. longer in San Francisco. Yeah, so currently uh, the destination for um, Comme des Garçons fragrances is definitely ZGO Perfumery. But before we get to the fragrances, if this is your first time tuning into the channel and you still haven't subscribed, please click the subscribe button below and also click the bell so that you'll be notified for future videos and giveaways. When was the first time you discovered uh, Comme des Garçons? It was through the fashion. It wasn't the fragrance. It was, um, I think, probably the 90s when um, Ray Kawabuko and Yoji Yamamoto were all over the fashion mm. magazines. Um, and I would guess that the first fragrance encounter with Comme des Garçons had to have been the incense line because... Oh, for you. It had to have been. I, I think that would have been the first time I noticed. Mm. The first fragrance I sampled from them and I actually ended up buying a small bottle of is their very first fragrance and it was towards the end of the 90s. I think it was 1999 and it was a fragrance I had never smelled anything like it before. It was all very synthetic, smelled of metal, it was minerally. I forgot the name of it, but that was the first fragrance I sampled from the house. But slowly but surely, I've really started falling in love. And I like their fragrances because they're totally different than other designer fragrances. Uh, they were niche before there was niche. Yeah, you're right. That's they, exactly they, it. They're, they've always been like on the edge of like art and fashion, like wearable art. And I think that translates to their fragrances as well. They're using notes that are not at all traditional to fragrance um, yeah. and consistently making just really interesting but wearable fragrances. Totally. So the brand was started by Ray Kawabuko. It's a clothing brand and of course like their very avant-garde clothes, the fragrances seem to be avant-garde as well. The name is interesting too. Comme des Garçons means like the boys, right? Oh, okay. I think. Yeah. Correct me, please, <laughs> ye of French-speaking renown. But I'm pretty sure it means like the boys, and I, I that appealed to me, I remember, as well, because it was a lot of, you know, very angular, androgyny, kind of like with, with not shapeless clothing, but like it was an early introduction to, to like high fashion androgyny for me. Mm. It's certainly not the first... You know, I mean, they're, I think George Sand wore men's clothing. I, I, we're going to have a lot of tangents. Like, let's get back to the fragrance. <laughs> yeah, I don't know where she was going with that. But <laughs> On a tangent, far, far away. <laughs> let's start off with the first fragrance. It's Comme des Garçons Series 10 Clash. Uh, 10, Series 10 is Clash. And this is Radish Vetiver. So, do you like vetiver in fragrances? I do sometimes. You do? It, it tends to go a little masculine for me. And do you enjoy radish? I like kimchi radish hmm. um, and I could really sort of take it or leave it otherwise. There's something interesting about this particular fragrance that I always associate radish with Japanese cuisine to begin with. So it was kind of a given that they would feature radish in a fragrance and I've never seen it come up before. It is unexpectedly lovely. It's very 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 vegetal. It has that pepperiness from the radish. You pointed out earlier that it has that kind of watery... Mm -hmm. um, Ozonic? Oh, yeah. But, like, when you bite into a radish, it's not, like... Dry. It's not juicy, though. Yeah. It is watery. Mm -hmm. um, and this reflects that, but, like, not in a gross way. Um, no, it's not gross at all. <laughs> I, well, I, don't, I don't necessarily want to wear it, mm. but I like it. Mm -hmm. It's okay. very nice, clean, fresh, vegetal. Yeah. I think it's more masculine, too. But either way, I have a friend who loves this one. So this is Series 10 Clash Radish X Vetiver. 
Next, going to their latest fragrance. Uh, it's Ganja. Do you like the cannabis in fragrances? Um, well, no, but I, I think they've done it very artfully here. It is, um, it's, it does smell, like they're, 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 it's not the first fragrance to be inspired by cannabis. Mm -hmm. Like there's Chronic from, uh, I don't who's that? 1969? 1969. But you know, there's, there's a few other brands that have done this and this is the one that smells the most like marijuana of any that I've smelled personally. There's like the leafy kind of ness. There's the, it, it's like It's it, green. It's it, very green and bitter. But a burningness as well. Like somebody has just lit, lit, it, lit yeah. a spliff. Um, it's very strong as well. Like a very concentrated um, It's thick. There's a thickness about it. Oily. Kind of like You're right. Oiliness. Yes, but but like a higher quality if you're into that sort of thing. <laughs> Um, Got only the higher quality stuff here. Well, we know we're not like we're not <laughs> we're not trying to like promote or endorse the the drug use, but it does smell like. Uh, Is it a drug? It depends where you live. Okay. <laughs> um, it, it it. I think it's a weed. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, ganja is the second fragrance we're going to talk about today. Next up, it's probably one of the fragrances that really got me into the brand, but slowly but surely is, I should say. But this is uh, Incense Avignon from uh, Comme des Garçons in their Incense series. Uh, this is probably one you know. It, this has to be the first um, one that I associated with the brand or recognized as, oh, Comme des Garçons has fragrance and the incense is from them. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. It's lovely. It is a big, churchy, <laughs> cold. Yeah, it's got this a lot of coolness. It doesn't have a lot of warmth, but it eventually settles to something warmer as it progresses through the life of the fragrance. There are resins, there's a little vanilla in the base, but it's a very cold church experience. Like you're entering a very old, cold church. Like in the town of Avignon, there's a church there and it's kind of like that. So when you enter this church, it's very cold, even with the incense burning, but eventually it settles to like an ambery base. It, it's very remarkably linear for me. I remember there was an, an Yves Saint Laurent incense called, I want to say New or something like that. And you, it was in this round, shiny, mirrored kind of and in a similar way this is almost like a wall of incense <laughs> like a stone wall of incense and i say I, it, that probably sounds like i'm saying something bad but it's gorgeous like this is probably the incense that is the reference incense for everyone yeah. like when you're talking about any other incense you're probably saying first thing is this like avignon or is it different most people know that. I think it's probably the most successful in the entire series uh, of incense fragrances. And I've got two in this video. Avignon is the first one. And then I also have, this one you might not know too much about. This is Jaisalmer. I like this one because it does have a little bit of a spicy touch to it. Try that. We have a little visitor flying around here. Where the heck? If you see our eyeballs like following it it's not you know where did it come from uh, the outside most <laughs> likely <laughs> anyway Jai Selmer has got the cardamom it's almost got like a cinnamony clovey touch to it absolutely yeah and it has that kind of softer warmer gaiac wood mm, yeah um, it's not like the like frankincense is very distinctive but gaiac wood is is recognizable in a different way. Yeah. There's a little bit of a creaminess from Gaiac what I get with yes, this yes. one. Almost like an amber woods kind of an experience. It's really, really lovely. It has like a, almost like a, like a chai tea kind of like... You're right. Vibe. The spices, that's what it does. Yes. Yeah, spices. I guess that that's why, because Jaisalmer is a holy city in India, I believe. Okay. Yeah. So it's to the the range, the incense line is like different cities that use incense yeah. Like in a faith-based way? Yeah, I think that's what it is. It's like different religions. Uh, you've got the Catholic uh, with Avignon. This is the Hindu. There's Zagorsh. Kyoto, which is the um, Japanese or Buddhist. And then there's the Zagorsk, which is the uh, Christian Orthodox in Russia. There's also one more with the, the Arab uh, Muslim one. But anyway, those I don't have featured here. This is Jai Salmer from uh, Comme des Garçons. All right, next up it's uh, Comme des Garçons 2. Do you guys know this one? So a lot of people have asked me if I know cop, not copper, what am I saying, concrete. This to me reminds me of concrete. 
Very interesting and aldehydic ambery experience, but there's bitter greenness in there oh as well. Oh my goodness, that's beautiful. You like this one? I love this one. I will never purchase it because I will never be able to take a picture of it. Um, <laughs> this is the worst <laughs> to photograph. There's no way to photograph this, this because it just lovely. reflects. This is so beautiful. What, there, it's almost like the there's like a lovely kind of clean floral, which either has to be the magnolia or the angelica is really coming through. There's definitely on those aldehydes. Yeah, the aldehydes is key here. It's very sparkly. It's very fizzy. It's light. It's airy. It has a lovely sort of springtime kind of vibe. You um, get spring? Don't you? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah I do. It's, it's, it's spring like, air. Yes. Yeah, spring. Yes. Yeah. Breezy, I, clean. Yeah. So it's very, very light. It has this lightness to it and you've got this kind of bitter vegetal angelica note, but you have a beautiful magnolia. Magnolias are very white, but they don't have a lot of fragrance to them. Contrasted with incense, there's a light smokiness here and then some spices. Mm -hmm. it's, it's nice. But it does remind me of copper a little. I think that the the bay, the is, bay. is not the not the water like the uh, the bay, bay leaf. leaf. Uh -huh. Do you get bay leaf? A little bit. There's a little bit of a green bitterness in the and background. It, it almost adds like a berry quality, which is not listed there as a note. But mm. I'm surprised you like this. I'm one. I'm surprised I like this one. It, and when he says that it's light, it is not light. It is not light in the sense of like soft. No. It is light as in it's not heavy. Yeah, but it's. Big, but it is big. Like the it, the the aldehydes are really taking it and sort of diffusing it out. Hmm. I'm so annoyed by the bottle because I really like that one. Yeah, I'm not gonna flash it because it's all very reflective. But and and I just like have the like, grubby hands. I leave fingerprints on everything. Like oh, yeah. that kind of reflective thing just gonna makes be me feel reflective. like a dirty person. Mm -hmm. really anyway, nice. two Comme des Garcons two. Oh, really? This next one I have reviewed with Dahlia. It's copper from Comme des Garçons. Do you remember this one? I sure do. Um, I remember much circular discussion about how the name did not um, reflect what it smelled like. You know, what do you get with this one most? I get galbanum with this one I, most. It's so green and vegetal. No. Um, it's so good though. It's so sexy. There's something sexy about I, this. I look at the bottle, I look at the name, and I expect it to be like copper tone sun cream, and it is <laughs> the furthest thing from it. But I could see it sort of being like an artistic expression of how like the metal copper gets very green when it oxidizes. Because oh. Oh. Couldn't that be it? Because this galbanum is so just like, and there is that metallic quality to it. There's definitely metallic. There's some tobacco, but it settles to an amber. It's a oh, warm amber. Oh, the tobacco, amp. yes. This is this is a, one of the best fragrances from this house. Absolutely love it. It's really, and, and it's interesting if you put this next to the radish. Mm. Similar kind of vegetal. There's definitely vegetal. Um, I like this more than the radish, though. Yes. <laughs> but I think the violet leaves are also giving it a greenness. Yeah, definitely. Um, it's it's a combination of things, but the galbanum is absolutely like the first thing. The other thing about this fragrance, it reminds me a little bit of Maison Crivelli's Iris Malacan. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes, it does. <laughs> anyway, this is copper from Ma uh, the Maison. This is copper from Comme des Garçons. All right, this next one, I'm not sure Dahlia is going to enjoy as much, but this is... Uh, you obviously have. Rouge. I love wearing rouge. I love it. I love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Okay. Rouge is very unique to me in that um, it's, it's a beetroot with incense. She's not a gourmand person, although this is not really gourmand. The incense is more powerful than the beetroot. Really? Which just adds a sweetness. It's beetroot, ginger, and, but I incense. I get the pink pepper. You do get it? Um, I think it's actually the mint that would be the biggest problem for me with this one. Really? I, I cannot do mint. I, I love... Do you get mint though? Don't you? It's way in the background. It's like the second thing I get after the pink pepper and the kind of like... So you don't get the beetroot. I get a general sort of sweetness, mm. but like, okay guys, I've like been pickling my own beets over the lunacy of this like multi-year plague. So maybe I think I'm thinking of like pickled beets and I put a lot of garlic Both in Both of us love pickled things. So much, <laughs> so much. Pickled beets are good. It's nice. Yeah, I love this one. It's so good. It's nice. So this next one I think Miss uh, Dahlia is a fan of. I think she's got a bottle of it as well. She does. Does she? She does. So we're talking about Serpentine. Ooh, it's this so one's so good. succulent. It's it is so... so succulent and green like a, like aloe vera that you, you know, 
did that too and broke it and then you can smell the inside the green veg vegetation. This to me smells like a park in a city specifically like with sidewalk around it and like mm. cars and buildings and cement not like a field of green in the outside where there's animals and things like a park in a city there's the, it's not like super strong but there is kind of like an asphalt kind of dustiness in there that gives it a little sort of well there, i was just gonna say i'm seeing things float around in here i don't know if that's actual asphalt though I really like it. It's so good, but really to me, like it's it. more about the inside of like something succulent, like aloe vera. You've chipped, you know, like broke it off and you can see that gelatinous kind of... Or like fresh cut grass as well. That could be that it too. That kind of juicy, like, you know, you just cut all of the lovely tops it's of it It's very grassy, like mowed lawn, fresh mowed lawn. Fresh mowed lawn. Yeah. yeah. No, I... It, mm. It's so good. So it's good. really good. But it's got all the, all the like all the green things. It has galvanum, it has grassiness. How the hides. And you can't beat that name. That's... That is a great name, Serpentine. Mm -hmm. So the next one we're going to talk about is white. So this one I don't know if Dahlia is going to like. I really love it for its spiciness. It's almost like a spicy chai. That was a lot of sprays just there. That you so... Did. It's also called white to me. This is not a white fragrance. It's very spicy. It's very warm. I'm picturing the color of the copper bottle more than white. I see what you mean about the chai, but it's not chai. It's but not it chai? does have a lot of the spices that are in chai, but the other one was more chai. The 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 jaila jaila oh jai sal jai that one had more of a chai feel than this mm -hmm. but it has warming warmer spices yeah it does because it's cloves cardamom cinnamon nutmeg pepper and then there's also pomegranate rose and coriander it's a spice bomb to me I agree yeah but I don't like it you don't like it okay but it's it's nice okay but I don't I don't know where it is. <laughs> I love it, this one. I like spices because I love chai. I drink a lot of chai with the cinnamon and spices. So it kind of has that reminder to me. It's very like, I, I cook with those spices. So I know those spices. It's just slightly over the line for me mm. of like too much like food. Okay. For me. All right, I have friends that hate gourmands. Besides this one. <laughs> <laughs> Going to their fragrance standard. This is a very unique fragrance to me that they use interesting notes, but to me, I, I, it seems like there's incense in this one, which it doesn't mention there is. Did this used to be called something else? I don't know. Is there one called like cement or something like that? That's concrete, Duh. which but reminds me of two. Wait, it's the same kind of... It is kind of similar. But this is like cedar, watercress, fennel, lemon, ginger, musk, saffron, tea, honeysuckle. What do you think? It's soft. It's soft, spicy. Soft, spicy yeah. incense. You do get incense. I get incense as well. Where does it... Well, I guess they don't mention incense. It could be from the cedar. But maybe it's the ginger that's giving it that kind of like fizzy kind of... This is definitely fizzy. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's got a lot of fizziness. It's almost like there's also aldehydes in here. It does. It does have that feel. I mean, and just because it's not listed doesn't mean it's not there. No. You're you're right. It's not. You don't have to follow those rules. It's whatever you smell. There is nothing standard about this, though. This fragrance. It is. I mean, that's what it's called, which is um, maybe sort of slightly a joke. Um, is it a collaboration with Standard Hotels? I don't know that. <laughs> that's what I thought about. <laughs> anyway, Standard by Comme des Garçons. Check that out if you don't know it. I like the usage of watercress. I love the flavor of watercress. Never seen that come up before. I don't know if I've seen it, but it it can't be the only. No, can't, probably not. Next up, it's Monocle Hinoki. This is a very, very popular fragrance. A lot of people say it reminds them of Huil by Aesop. It's a Hinoki wood is a type of a cypress tree from Japan, is what I was told. So it's cypress, camphor, woods, pine, cedar, olibanum. So it's like a like a pine forest, a cypress forest. Very camphorous. Very camphorous? Camphoric. Camphoric. Yeah. And and that might be the cypress as well, but it has that very kind of like Almost like eucalyptus? Almost. Yeah. But cypress has that. I am convinced that if you or well, okay. I got a eucalyptus candle and a cypress candle and I you burn them at the same time? Not at the same time, but like one after the other. And I did not notice that I had switched candles. Hmm. They had that same kind of like... 
opens up and clears up your right like senses. if I was congested I would no longer be hmm okay this is uh, Monaco Hinoki nice all right next up we're going to the library series of fragrances it's Calamus used to be part of the green collection they moved it into a collection called library this is really good this is almost like serpentine to me this smells way more like a, you broke open an aloe and the the, the the gel came out than serpentine does. Like if you look at them together, this this is way more fresh cut grass and this is way more aloe. But the reason I said aloe is because aloe is, you know, gelatinous. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This wears gelatinous, even though it might not smell like the aloe. It wears that you thick. You know what's really lovely about serpentine is it is one of the few fragrances that genuinely I can wear exercising and like it's not I don't feel like I would be offending anybody it works as just like a clean I wear a portrait of a lady when I'm exercising yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding <laughs> no this is this is gorgeous though yeah. it's very green maybe the you, you meant did you mention that the bamboo and this and the celery yeah this is bamboo angelica celery seeds red berries pink pepper very unique combination of notes very unique smell it is it's very fresh and clean and but not like watery no the pink pepper and the it kind of it has like a like the berries kind of gives it a sharpness there yeah there's a little bit of a nice. spice in there light lightly fruitiness as well so the next one we're going to the same collection it is lily have you tried this one? I haven't tried uh, this collection at all. Oh, gorgeous. But it is definitely Lily of the Valley with freesia, syringa, rose. But Do it's not like um, Diorissimo's use of Lily of the Valley. It doesn't have that soapy kind of ultra. I love Diorissimo. I know. This I is... actually get freesia more. You get freesia more. Don't you? Noses do pick up things differently. We, it's not like we've ever disagreed on it. But, anything. you know, I agree with you. It is freesia, but the first blast is a lily of the valley. It develops into a freesia. And for me, even further on, I think it's more syringa, which has kind of like a honeyed experience to me. There, There is there is like almost like a, a, a honeyed citrus something, mm -hmm. which I don't know syringa, but I'm guessing that's it. Nice. Yeah, this is really it's good. An, it's a nice take on floral. It's, it's soapy. It's... Um, it's a Comme des Garçons style. But it, yeah, it has that kind of like art, arty, kind of something slightly off in an interesting way thing that many of their fragrances do. Mm -hmm. Which again, I'm, that, that's a positive. It might not have sounded positive, but it was. Okay. This next one, I'm not sure Dahlia's going to like, but it's Soda. This is a fun, this is one of the funnest fragrances from this house. Just like wearing Soda or smelling soda smell it soda i really like this you do it's, it's like it's like the um it's very fizzy but like a sprite or or, yeah. or seven up yeah. um it's almost you've mixed cola and seven up together this is like when you make a witch's brew and you're a kid and and you're at the soda fountain and you put different combinations of the different sodas together mm. but this with a heavy dose of whatever the lemon lime version is well this is aldehydes rum lime lemon lily i love that you I do thought, yeah i thought you were gonna hand me something that smelled like root beer or cream soda i didn't know you would like this i really like that oh wow okay come to garcon library ha. soda she likes it. I By like golly, it. she likes it. I like it. <laughs> All right, the next one, also the last one from the library collection, Sequoia. This one created by Bertrand du Chaffoul. And a Sequoia is a tree. And I went to Sequoia High School. Wow, this has a lot of musky animalic stuff. Really? It's very woody. It's boozy. I enjoy this one. I absolutely love it. And in fact, out of the four in the library collection, this is my favorite because it just has that booziness. It's the oud for me that like is overpowering everything else. Really? Yeah. It's it's got the a very like deep, murky, dark kind of like. But you don't get the brightness from the rum. I just get oud. Oh, okay. It's Rum Sequoia Mahogany Oud Papanax Leather Caro Karundi. But it smells like Oud. It smells like Oud. All right, so next fragrance. Uh, if you ever buy this fragrance, don't ever stand it up because it will not stand up. These bottles, there's two of them in the collection from Comme des Garçons. Uh, they're meant to be put against something besides like uh, standing it up or you can just put it down this way but this is dot 
Dot is a very interesting smelling fragrance. It's got fruits in it. And I'm not sure if Dahlia is going to like this. It's very interesting. It does have a more of a mass appeal kind of a thing. And I'm picking up a lot of Osmanthus in this one. It's very, very fruity. Bitter orange, fruits, green notes, Osmanthus, Olibanum. So there's a little bit of a resinous base down there. What do you think? You get that bitter kind of like orange peel. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. And yeah. I also get quite a bit of Osmanthus. It's very fruity. Yeah, it's it's nice. It's not in a bad way, but it's sort of almost like potpourri. Like a... Mm. Like a I don't with, get potpourri. With orange? Uh, I'm getting apricot compote with lots of fruits and some, you know, like green something like uh, sage, not sage, but like um, basil thrown in. Maybe that's in the green notes. Yeah. That's what I get. I like, I like the bottle. I think it's hilarious. It's like something out of a Dr. Seuss book. <laughs> um, Dot. Okay, the next one we're going to talk about is black. Do you know this one? Um, no. This is so good. This is probably a great everyday wear, but you gotta like incense and you gotta like licorice. Do you like licorice? I love licorice. I know. And you do too. And what do you think? Wow. Okay. So this is one of the uh, strongest fragrances yet. This is on par with the like Avignon line in terms of like just really impact, but I get sort of coffee and I get the deep leathery woodsiness. I don't think coffee is a note in there, but there's something about it that makes me think of like coffee grounds. Hmm. Do you get rubber? No. Do you? I get a little rubber. There's a little bit of a rubberiness in here that reminds me of the rubberiness in Bulgari Black. Black? This is kind of like... But um, it's leathery. Yeah, but it's not fully like a motorcycle rider, but it has a sort of like edge to it. Like... Um, there's, there's something like, like you've just been sawing wood or doing something. Definitely has woodworking. wood chippings, incense, resins, but that licorice, do you get the licorice? I do, but it's not like long. It's not strong. It's not, uh, um, one of the top like three notes, but it's present. This is to, this to my nose is very masculine in a very like, um, grown up kind of way. I also envision this particular fragrance as a fragrance that Batman would wear. <laughs> I don't know why. Which Batman? Whichever one that's no. coming out soon. Oh. Who's the Batman now? Robert Pattinson. Stop it. Yes. Is he really? The movie comes out in a month. In less than a month. Really? On the 3rd of March. Girl, where have you been? I, in a cave. Um, that cave? <laughs> and, and clearly not. Although that makes sense because, like, the pizza company, like, Little Caesars has a bat-shaped oh, I don't know pizza what... right now. <laughs> I didn't know they why. Do? I didn't know why. <laughs> anyway, I would think this is kind of a batman -esque. Okay, but I'm going to just, like, override that and say Michael Keaton. Because... Yeah, he's in the Flash movie, by the way. Um, okay... Do you know they're doing, uh, they're bringing back the old Batman? I'm, I am overwhelmed. There, there are so many superhero comic book movies right now. But you're I'm, a Marvel girl, Marvel granny he's DC, girl anyway. I'm Marvel, <laughs> and that's that's true. I do, I do pay more attention to. She's a Marvel girl. I, I have seen almost all of the Marvel stuff. Okay. I, I didn't make it through the cartoon. I haven't seen Shang Chi yet. It's good. Really? It's, it's good. It's fun. I haven't seen the last couple of Marvel films. Next is Play Red. Do you know Play Red? I don't know it like like I've worn it, but I've smelled it. Mm -hmm. It's so red and it's so fruity. It's a sour cherry, mandarin orange, pink Very pepper. Very cheerful. Uplifting, yeah, fun, it, it playful. totally works with the name. And it's not cherry. Like Cherry's been trending lately since Tom Ford did The Lost Cherry. There was like a cherry punk and there's another... Cherry cherry. Mm. And then like Thumbsucker has a... Like all of those are sort of deeper, like almost cough droppy mm. cherries. But this is not that. This is definitely a really fun Yeah, cherry. this is like if... In, if like instead of a maraschino cherry, you took like a cherry candy and dropped it in your drink. But do you get saffron? There's a saffron and also some light leathery aromatic touches I in there. I get citrus and I get the cherry. I don't notice the saffron, but I I believe you that it's there. Mm -hmm. It's there. Yeah, it's it's, there. it's it's very light and playful. Everything is about this one is red and that they they're using red notes because it also has cinnamon, pink pepper. You know, really, really wonderful. I want the geranium more than. Oops. It's okay. I, 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 I think, I think that's clever. 
Yeah. That's a good theme. I approve. Okay. Because Ray Kawabuko needs my approval. Okay, badly. she does. <laughs> the next one is uh, Play Green. This is so good. They do do a lot of green fragrances at this house. They do them well. They do. Have you tried this one? Yeah, but again, I don't remember it. You might not like it because you say you don't like the note in there. I like mint. Mint doesn't like me. Oh, okay. Do you eat mint? Well, I drink it. Oh, okay. Like, on the regular. Oh, mint tea. Yeah, me too. Oh, my gosh. And look, That's what I had before you got here. <laughs> I would like some right now, please. Mint, lime, basil, vetiver, juniper, mastic, jasmine, cedar, and brett. It does smell quite a bit like mint tea. Mm -hmm. Mint tea? Is it minty mint tea or mint tea? Mint tea. <laughs> Just like, playing with you. No, I know. And I'm just being pedantic because I can. Because <laughs> that is my role here. Play green. Yeah, it's of, I gotta say, of the greens we have smelled today, this is my least favorite. Oh. I know, I'm sorry. But even But below, you don't like, you don't like mint in fragrances or mint doesn't like you in mint in fragrances. We, we have a mutual understanding at this stage. Okay. okay. I, I want to like mint, I just don't. Okay. But you drink mint tea. All the time. <laughs> Okay. All right. The last fragrance we're going to talk to you about, and we do have one bonus too, so stay uh, till after the outro, is Marseille. My latest favorite fragrance from this house. I kind of love that their bottles are all different. There's kind of been a movement where a lot more brands have like all the, all the same Uniform? Bottle. Yeah. I, I like that they're just... Uh, Random. Yeah. So this is all soapy. Very, very Ooh, soapy. Ooh, I love it. You do? I do. Oh my god, you reacted so well to that. I love this one. I don't, I, I don't know anything like this one. It's Absolutely a new kind it. of soapy. Really? Yeah. Expensive soapy? Definitely. <laughs> yeah, this, this is... This is, okay, okay. This is, you're in Europe, and you're staying in a nice hotel. Mm. And it's their soap. Ooh. Yes? Very expensive soap. Yeah, it's, it, well... It's a luxury boutique hotel. It's an, it's, it's five stars. Five stars? Totally. Maybe it's not boutique, it's just five-star luxury hotel. Multiple dollar signs. Multiple dollar signs. Do you like it? I do like it. Yeah. I feel really like there's good. aldehydes in this one as well. It, it is, for sure. It's got to be. It's very fizzy. Ooh, nice. So you fell in love with two fragrances. I like this one. Yeah, this is really, really good. I, I've never... Smelled. It's become my favorite from the house. And even though we didn't rank this list, we decided to feature this one at number one because... We just found out that we decided to do that. I love this one. <laughs> I Yeah, Serpentine is still my favorite, but I really like that one. And I was really surprised by the extremely reflective one with Angelica and... Mm -hmm. um, number two. That one I really liked. I spent more time with that one. All right, guys. Thanks so much for watching today's video. Thanks for being here, Dahlia, for, for joining me, me for this and video. If you would like to see more from me, I am only on Instagram at the moment, but it is the perfumed Dahlia. She's there. Guys, if you want to check out these fragrances and you're in San Francisco, please do stop into ZGO Perfumery yes. or visit them uh, via the link in the info box. I do have a discount code, but it does not apply to the fragrances of Comme des Garçons, but you can use it on other fragrances. Just check with the store to see which brands it applies to. Other than that, I appreciate you tuning in. If you have any questions or comments, please list below. Please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye. And the last fragrance, or I should say the bonus fragrance, is Comme des Garçons 3. I'm seriously obsessed with this, like, raised bump glass. If this situation. bottle works. Sorry. <laughs> there you go. Oh my god, look at that. That's so cute. This smells so good. It's basil, pimento, angelica, incense, olibanum, birch, clary sage, mace, cassis. Wow. I like it. I love it. It smells really, really nice. So this is the first one that is herbaceous. Like, Not this categorically, one? that's this is... minty. This is like a bunch of very is aromatic herb, herbs. Oh, okay. Like the basil, like you said, the clary sage, really gives it this wild kind of green. Hmm. I get a little bit of mint in this one as well. It's there, but it's not like... Not as strong as the uh, Play 3 yeah. green or Play... no, Play green. And then it does have a little bit of sweetness from the pimento and the angelica. And this has like also... Um, I, I don't know where the fizziness is coming from on this one. Is it 
An incense? It can be it could be like there's a resin, they're saying incense, but it's it could be a resin and sometimes resins do have a fizziness. That one's especially a, if it's myrrh. That one's delightful. You like this one? I do. Okay. And that bottle is so cool. Yeah. I know we didn't feature a lot of uh, the usual suspect suspects that people really la rave about this house, but this is more of an eclectic list of fragrances. They, you know, Comme des Garcons has an enormous line of fragrances. Huge. It's massive. Um, honorable mentions. I know people really like cement from mm -hmm. them. We kind of dropped that in earlier. Cement? Um, I think it's called cement. Concrete? Con concrete. <laughs> um, yes. Um, and that's almost like a slightly sweet. That one to me smells like water on on sidewalk. Water. It on reminds the me of play two. I mean, it reminds me of two. This one reminds me of this one. Yeah, that one's really. I, I quite like that one. Um, but there's wonder. There's wonder oud. Amazing, wonder wood. Amazing green. Amazing green. Floriental. There's a ton of fragrances out there. That's three other incenses. We we mentioned those as well. Uh huh. Um, and so there's much. more in the in the uh, monocle series. There's more in the monocle series. I got Laurel, gave it to my brother. They also have a lot more in the library series. In the ten, there's ten in that collection. So there's a ton. Yeah, it's not just like drop in and smell through. It'll take you a year. Uh, well, if you really want to <laughs> know them, you you and like spend time with them. It's it is kind of a project, but like a very fun one. And I I think they are the most out there designer. I think so. And they're, I mean, they're, they're kind of pushing it farther than most of the niche houses. Yeah, I would agree. I would agree, definitely. Yeah. Bold and beautiful, and um, I really, really appreciate somebody uh, taking notes that I would not have associated with smelling, like, nice or attractive or appealing or, like, fragrance or perfume, and kind of putting it in front of me in a way that I am rethinking beetroot as something other than, you know, something I would pickle with garlic and coriander. It's delightful, by the way. I recommend trying that. But, um, the pickles, that is. You're making me hungry, okay? It's time for dinner. <laughs> um, thanks for Thanks watching. so much for watching, guys. Bye-bye.